I'm opening this month's pricing review with Tesla as they've just dropped a bombshell that will dramatically affect the price that all EV drivers will pay for public charging into the future, no matter what brand they drive. I'm Dave. Welcome to Dave Takes It On. Well, it's all go this week with a massive bankruptcy filing in America for a huge EV charging company. But let's begin with Tesla superchargers. Now, Tesla does not have a fixed price for every supercharger throughout the country for Tesla drivers, which all other EV charging networks do have. Tesla price differs from location to location and also on the time of the day, breaking that into peak and off peak. And at a choice few locations, they have a super off peak. Each month, I compile a chart of the prices charged at 11 superchargers throughout the UK and calculate an average. This month, Tesla average price change is really marginal. The off-peak off rate drops slightly, the peak, peak rate rises slightly in most areas, but greater in others. But generally, little change. Off-peaks round about 39p, peak is about 47p, averaged out it's about 43p per kilowatt hour. Yeah, we Tesla drivers enjoy charging rates that are permanently significantly lower than anywhere else in the world. Now for that bombshell. Well, Tesla have opened up some of its existing superchargers to non-Tesla owners already. And with the launch of the V4 charger last year, most, if not all, future locations are almost certain to be open to all. So anyone can drive any EV into one of those superchargers and without an adapter, without any membership or additional payment, and they can charge there. And the price is exceedingly attractive, being an average of just 58 pence peak and 53p off peak. However, there are a few variations from this. The Trafford Centre in Manchester, for example, charges 61p peak, but only 41p off peak. Heathrow charges 61p peak and 45p off peak, while Tottenham is 70 pence peak and 54p off peak. But the outlier here is frankly services. Now I've made a video detail detailing why frankly services on the M5 is such a staggering bombshell, going into much greater detail, and that just launched this weekend. But here, the peak rate is 74 pence and the off peak is 59 pence for non-Tesla drivers. So what's so important? Well, to answer that, you need to see the prices charged by the other EV charging networks. So hold fire for just a moment. I'll get back to it and I'll also cover the bankruptcy. We're going to lead with Apple Green. Uh, they've just taken a huge step forward and deserves to be taken seriously at last. Apple Green Electric is part of, but not the same as Apple Green Group, and that's a fossil fuel based organisation making most of its money primarily from petrol stations. Apple Green Electric is independently funded from green investment trusts, is claimed to have seen the future, which is exponential growth of EVs, and has leapt straight onto the charging scene with a new company, new chargers, and a brand new website and app. Now, regular viewers will know that I've slated Apple Green for a really pathetic website in the past. Well, no more. It's actually looking seriously good. They use a variety of chargers, but recently they've been installing American-made units, which are slim and stylish. These units vary in power. My local ones are rated at about 180 kilowatts. But they claim that all units are future-proof and can be upgraded to 350 kilowatts at any point. So this is looking good. Well, the price is a disappointing 79 pence per kilowatt hour by contactless. And that's reduced to 77 pence if you use the app. 2p, big deal. Well, I'll come back to the price very shortly, but they have definitely upped their game. They claim now almost a thousand rapid or ultra rapid chargers already and have huge expansion plans, including looking for new partners to enter into joint EV charging ventures with. Well, time will tell how independent they actually are from the Apple Green Group, but it actually does look good. 
Or Fastnet also has had a massive rebranding and relaunch with a new website. Gone is the overpowering yellow, and instead you get a peaceful, gentle light blue. It does really make a difference. There's also a world of knowledge and information packed into their site. They are really going out of their way to attract EV owners to them as a brand. Almost everything you want to know is contained in here somewhere, including two standout features. The first is a charging speed calculator. You can enter your make and model and it'll tell you the fastest you can charge your EV on any of their chargers. That's really handy. So you can see whether your car's up to speed. Well, second is the launch of Auto Charge. You simply open the app. You have to have the app for this. You enter your details. Next time you charge at Fastned, you can add your car to its computer database on the screen before you finish. This simply means that next time you charge at any Fastned charger, and every time in the future, your car will be recognised and payment will be taken by your chosen method. No more RFID or contactless or apps or QR code. You drive in, you plug in, you walk away. Your EV will charge and the app will keep you up to date with what it is so you can see when your charging is complete. Then when you're finished, you just simply unplug it and payment will be taken automatically by your chosen stored method. This is exactly what Tesla owners have always had, but it is amazing to see it in action for non-Tesla EVs. We'll look up the price, and unfortunately the bright yellow's back again, but it's only one page. But the national rate at any time is 69 pence per kilowatt hour. So that's a good 10 pence cheaper below the UK average. But they also have a membership, which is well worth looking at. They claim if you travel 200 miles in a month or charge more than 58 kilowatts in a month, you will save money. And nearly all EV drivers who cannot charge at home already do. That membership then makes sense. £9.99 gets you a 30% discount, meaning not 69p, but 48p. If you do just two 50 kilowatt charges in a month, even paying the membership fee, you will save over £10 than if you'd just pulled in and used contactless. The charges are modern, they're powerful, and they're mainly the 300 kilowatt dual bay units. The screens show a wide range of tech stuff, charging rates, charging curves, etc. while you charge. I've used them in the past. I found the contactless to be very iffy. But of course, auto charge will take care of that. Plus, as a bonus, I believe I'm right in saying that auto charge will not involve a pre-authorization fee. Such a shame there's so few of them. There's only a touch over 100 chargers in the UK, but it is growing and it's growing rapidly. They've got something over 100 new chargers already under construction in 2024, with planning permission granted and work are actually underway. So their network is likely to double this year. Still leaves them down the bottom end, but uh, it's heading in the right direction. Oh, by the way, if you like this video or find it useful, please subscribe. It makes such a huge difference to a new channel like this. Instavolt seem to be plodding on. That ah, little change. They claim to be the UK's largest, and actually they possibly are. It's nick and nip and tuck at the top. Uh, although the majority of their charges are 50 kilowatt dual bay charges, which are pretty much useless these days, and they're located in small retail parks and fast food and drink outlets, Starbucks, McDonald's. They also have a cap on the power of chargers that they install, and that's 160 kilowatts. Well, while this is adequate for many budget end EVs, that is a good bit too low for most. See, I take constant readings around the country and the average charging speed I've recorded is hovering around the 50 kilowatts. Yes, many, including me, can charge many times faster than this, and many do. But far too many EVs have a 100 kilowatt maximum speed of charging built into them. These will never actually see 100 kilowatts, hence the low average speed. However, more and more EVs are arriving with charging speeds of 250 kilowatts 
and more. And yes, they can actually charge at that speed. But for them, unless it's a really small top up or you're stopping for lunch anyway, then these are just too limited at 160 kilowatts. Now you need to factor in the arrival of sodium ion batteries and solid state batteries. And you can see in a year or two, these will be about as much use to the average EV owner as the 50 kilowatt dual bay chargers are today. That's ironic. On the website, they actually show a Lotus Electra driver at an Instavolt, thumbs up, smiling. What you find is they've got a 160 kilowatt limit and it's tiny compared to the 275 to 300 kilowatts that the Lotus is quite capable of achieving. Why someone chose that picture, I'll never know. But their price will probably kill off Instavolt long before their charges because they have a universal 85 pence per kilowatt hour rate. Well, for the success of their business, you only have to look at their occupancy at some of its more popular locations. I can't see this surviving much longer at that price into the future. There are too many more powerful charges around at much cheaper prices. And that will get far worse very quickly, indeed, with Tesla's new launch. I would say avoid it for now. Wait to see what happens if the price drops. Well, Ionity has a number of deals and offers on new EV sales. You're likely to have some sort of discount EV charging pricing included. So check this one out. I was at an Ionity charge, I met one uh, Hyundai owner, and he found out when I asked him if he would charge for the camera, uh, he found out he could charge at 30 pence per kilowatt hour for the first year. That amazed him, that's a cheap price. Now, he wasn't actually going to use it because he was with Octopus and he was only paying 7.5p and he does charge at home. But it's nice to know if you go on a road trip, try and find an Ionity. So first message is, if you've got a deal, use it. Oh, by the way, I'll put a table of all the prices at the end for easy viewing. Well, I want to have a very good sized network and they have an incredible 500 or more new chargers already under construction for completion this year. They're finally starting to go places. They charge a slightly below, but only just uh, average 74 pence per kilowatt hour. But they also offer a membership they call their passport for a half price just £5.49 a month fee you get a 25 percent discount making a net 56 pence that's a good rate same guide applies here if you do more than two charges a month uh, the membership is an absolute no-brainer plus don't forget these memberships are fully cancelable so if you charge at home all year but you do just one huge road trip in the summer, join, pay for a month, cancel at the end of the month, and you get your cheap rate. There's no catch. The chargers are generally the more powerful 350 kilowatts units, and they are reliable. Now, Grid Service and Network have been promoting the most overpass videos for almost all they were doing, except for the price. And here we must tackle the Tesla bombshell. Well, Tesla and GridServe have long had a joint venture when it comes to locations. They do work together. Wherever you see a large GridServe installation, you're quite likely to see a Tesla supercharger as well. I've seen these for myself and filmed them on many occasions, like Swansea, Rugby, Exeter, T-Bay, to name just a few, and there are loads of them. And there's no competition between them, as Tesla drivers will always use the superchargers, as they are cheaper and non-Teslas can't, so they will use the grid serve. Well, Tesla are also on an installation spree, but they are installing V4 chargers. And these were launched to be aimed specifically at non-Tesla drivers. They got a screen, contactless payment and longer cable. I launched a video a while back saying that the first time Tesla opened a new supercharger open to all on the same site as a grid serve or our Ionity or Osprey or Apple Green large installation, that will announce the start of a massive EV charging price war. That is exactly what's just happened at Frankly Services on the M5 Southbound. Grid serve have 12 350 kilowatt chargers there, 
and Tesla just opened 16 V4 250 kilowatt chargers and these are open to all EVs. So the pricing here is absolutely critical. If they make the price too dear, uh, nobody other than Teslas will use them because Teslas don't pay these dearer prices. If they make it too cheap, all they'll do is get all of the non-Teslas to head for the Tesla chargers, clogging them up for everybody. Well, Tesla has chosen to split the tariff offered, peak and off-peak, setting the off-peak to a really cheap 59 pence and the peak to an expensive 74 pence. So why is this such a bombshell? Well, if you have a non-Tesla, you can't charge at home, for example, and you're forced to pay wherever you go round about 79 pence and certainly 79 but pence at GridServe. Uh, then 74 pence will look cheap to you and you might use it. But the 59 pence is ridiculously cheap. So I'm going to imagine that the vast majority of EV owners who currently use GridServe there will almost certainly stop that and they will go and use the Tesla superchargers at off-peak times. That's an absolute no-brainer. But here things get really dramatic. You see, 59p is the non-member rate where anyone can just arrive, plug in, pay 59 pence by contactless and leave. No, no strings attached. But of course, Tesla offers a membership. It's not required. You can use these charges as non-member paying no fees. But for $10.99 a month, you get prices at the Frankly services down to around 39 pence off peak. And that is less than half price charging to a non-Tesla that previously had to spend 79p. So who wouldn't do that? So there you have GridServe. They've just received half billion in funding to expand the network. And as a result, they put up their price from 60, 67 pence to six, uh, 79 pence to cash in. And Tesla's just shut them down. Their charges will be deserted. I'm going to keep an eye on this over the next week. I'm probably going to do a 24 hour watch on them and see what's happening. But I predict that the grid surf chargers will end up pretty empty. And other than Tesla hiking all non-Tesla prices to 79p and banning memberships at this location, there is no way out for grid surf. They have to drop their prices. And even when they do, they have to hope that some drivers will still use them simply because they operate 350 kilowatt chargers while Teslas are only 250. That's important, for example, for Hyundai and for Kia EV6. Well, GridServe is on such a roll, they are installing everywhere. They're opening massive hubs. They're doing amazing things, like the trial down in Roach in Cornwall with solar PV and grid-connected batteries. But all of that and the half billion investment is now under serious threat. So I'll be launching a special video with far more detail very shortly, so watch out for that. It will totally change the whole EV charging dynamics and will dramatically reduce prices for all EV charging networks, not just GridServe. They don't, do not even have a membership or deal with which to respond. Well, stand by for action. Anything can happen in the next 24 hours. Oh, whoops, sorry. That's uh, Troy Tempest, Stingray. Hey, look it up, all you youngsters. Well, EV Point, meanwhile, does not have joint locations with Tesla. In fact, they've just entered a deal with Tesla to buy and install their V4 chargers. They are the EV charging branch of EV Garage, EG, or EV, Euro Garages, and they're on a bit of a roll as well. They have bright, clean charger locations, really attractive standard price of 65p, no memberships are needed or offered. They also offer things like vacuum cleaners, tyre pumps and fragrances alongside their chargers, so you can while away a few minutes doing some good to your car rather than grabbing a donut and a coffee. Maybe you can do both. Anyway, they also advertise their prices on motorways with huge, tall, illuminated signs. They're clearly visible before you take the slip road advertising the price. What a great idea. 
They are on an expansion, hence the deal with Tesla. They have a great price, great features, really good app, but their website sucks. No direct website. You have to look up EG, or Euro Garages, and even then, on that site, they barely mention EV charging. Definitely a missed opportunity here. Also, EV Point do have chargers for pull-throughs, and these are aimed at lorries and vans, and, and particularly those with trailers, but they're actually ideal for caravans. It is almost Easter, time to get your caravan tyres pumped up. If you want to stop without unhitching, try EV Point. They're one of the few that have drive through bays. We're in direct competition with them. MFG are also installing huge numbers of new chargers. In fact, many more. Something over 500 new ones are due to open this year. They are not ideal in my mind. First, they are an expensive 79 pence per kilowatt hour, so that's not attractive. But next, they operate mainly from petrol forecourts. So again, environmental, smell, fumes, dirty, dirty floors, get mud and diesel on your boots. Um, but they are installing large numbers at each location, which is to be praised. And they're powerful units, usually 150, but often 300 kilowatts. So pretty future proof. That would be really interesting to see if the petrol stations they're operating from begin to close down shortly due to a drop in demand for petrol as EV charger installations and EV sales continue to grow. Now MFG have a target to become the largest forecourt operator in the UK and also do become a major player in the EV charging market. 500 more charges this year might head them in that direction. Again, they have no memberships and no special deals or offers. Well, Sainsbury's charge network is growing very nicely and the new multi-charger installations, they're really growing fast. They now have an app and a website with all the locations. So no longer do you have to rely on others. At one point it wasn't even on ZapMap. Not sure it still is now. It is a shame that they too have chosen to start things rolling at 79 pence. But I predict that too will change as competition hots up because Tesco and Morrisons are also busily installing. Well, the Kempire unit Sainsbury's chose, really neat and reliable, very powerful. It makes a great change. You can now do a full charge while shopping for those who can't charge at home, or just make it a time for lunch and charge while you eat. Well, supermarkets have easily taken the vast majority of the petrol and diesel sales, forcing the closure of many independent garages and forecourts selling petrol over the last 20 years. And the fierce competition between themselves, the supermarkets, means that they can't abuse their positions and start hiking prices with a near monopoly. It is quite possible that EV charging will head the same way they will become the dominant networks. Again, as long as they offer choice and the price prices are competitive, should end up being a good thing. Osprey are seemingly in a little world of their own. They claim to be the biggest or fastest growing, but a mere thousand charges does not earn them the title of the biggest, nor does installing about 250 this year earn them the title of the fastest growing. They do install more powerful, reliable Kempire units, that are also one of the neatest, although they all seem to suffer from heavy unwieldy cables and plugs, hence those overhead springs that you see to take some of the load. They charge a bang on average 79 pence per kilowatt hour, not exciting in the slightest, and in fact they also seem to be already suffering from underuse. In Banbury for example, the Osprey charge is right next to a Tesla supercharger, open to all, and it is about half price. The new chargers definitely underutilised. I often wonder how long it will take them to realise that the 79p average price is, is and always was a temporary stopgap until things settle down. Remember at one time we had over 40,000 petrol stations in the 70s. Some of them just a single or double pump outside a village shop and some of them charged an absolute fortune per gallon. Well, today they've virtually all disappeared. There's around 8,000 
petrol stations left, most of them at supermarkets, each of them much bigger, and the prices are actually highly competitive. So I see EV chargers going through a similar route, only much quicker. EV networks will come and go at a seemingly scary pace. Oh, talking about going, let's tackle the bankruptcy I mentioned earlier. Charge Enterprises Inc. appears to be the first of these. This was started back in 2019 and grew really quickly and it attracted backing from Ford, Volvo, General Motors and Stellantis who used them for all their charger installations, uh, particularly over in the States. Now, once again, GM seems to have backed the wrong horse. Hmm, remember, what was it, Lordstown Motors? Um, Charge Enterprise just declared bankruptcy. Now, I believe this is a little bit different. See, for many companies in America, if they get into difficulties, they can file for Chapter 11 protection. What this means is that all the debts are stayed, uh, halted, paused. Uh, no creditors can shut them down or force them into bank a full bankruptcy. And they've got time to refinance, reformulate, or whatever it is they do. And many do actually come back stronger than survive or thrive. Well, in this case, from what I've seen, I believe they've actually filed for bankruptcy, meaning that they have no plans for restructuring or remodeling, and they are not coming back. Now, it seems strange to me that with government grants, to pay the majority of the costs of buying and installing the chargers and infrastructure, that they could not make a go of it. But I have to say it does clear the way for other networks who do have a viable business to claim those grants and expand the charger network. Once again in pricing we have the oil giants BP Pulse and Shell Recharge. They always seem to say the right things, but they carry on drilling and polluting at the same time, so I can never really take either of them as a serious EV charger network. Both charge an absolutely horrendous 85 pence per kilowatt hour, so my advice is avoid them at that price. That's ridiculous. BP Pulse has installed some larger hubs with multiple high power chargers. But at 85 pence. Well, Shell, well, Shell seems to be shutting down their old chargers that have not worked for months and just ripping them out, not replacing them. Shell, for all its size, seems to be installing less than 100 new chargers this year. But if the new 175 kilowatt chargers down in Cornwall are anything to go by that I saw recently, it won't mean anything because neither was operational. I really cannot find anything much to say about them. Now, BE.EV uh, has launched, well, sort of. It's not doing much. It's charging 82 pence. Hasn't got the guts to charge the full 85. Wants to get a bit more than 79. They've not got many chargers. They're not really... They're not doing anything. Um, can't see them being around for long, but we keep an eye on everyone, so if they do manage to pull through, uh, then that's another charger network. EV, EV, Evil Eye, uh, likewise, they're not doing that much either. In fact, there are multiple smaller networks springing up all over. They're all keen to jump on the gravy train of grants and subsidies and current high prices in a rapidly growing new field. I even expect to see some councils having a go very soon. Anything at all to try to generate some revenue. But unfortunately, I fear they will all end up the same way. EV chargers at the moment have a typical occupancy rate of less than 10%. That means for the vast majority of each day they do nothing but stand there out in the wind and the rain and the snow deteriorating. Well first, these little ones face the giant and undisputed world leader in EV charging, Tesla. Next they face the price war that has just started. Then of course they face the supermarkets. Sainsbury's is racing away. MFG has just bought up hundreds of Morrison's locations and Tesco and Booth's are already looking to expand this side of their business. All the smaller networks are likely to end up like the smaller petrol stations we once had. Well, the price war is of real interest this month. Initial reactions from many is, they don't see anything new, it's no big deal. But I'm predicting they're absolutely wrong. 
The public EV charges are in for a transformation over the next couple of years, and the end result will be more charges, much better coverage, and cheaper prices all round. Well, thanks very much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, please click the like button. And if you would, please subscribe. It makes such a difference to us as a new channel. If you click the bell icon, the notification, you'll be notified the next time we launch a video. And a massive, massive, massive thank you, last but not least, to our Patreon members. This side of the business is growing dramatically. We've had our most successful month ever. And thank you so much for your support for the channel. I'm Dave.